Prepare to get gas because it's time for the week in gear. This week, we have a true stereo analog delay pedal with a price to match. Boss celebrates their 50th anniversary and they gave me three pedals to give away. And Josh Scott releases a clon that isn't a clon, but it still is a clon, but it isn't. Also, this show is brought to you by Guitar Auctions at Gardner Holgate, which is the reason I may look and sound a little tired today because I stayed up way past my bedtime last night browsing their new online catalog, but more about them shortly. Okay, let's kick off this week's most exciting gear releases with a do-it-yourself clon pedal. There are so many clon style pedals on the market from this $20 wish.com horsey to this $5,000 real deal. But with that in mind, you'd think releasing a new and refreshing clon to the pedal world would be absolutely impossible. Well, you'd be wrong because JHS pedals have done just that with the not a clone. I'm going to say it like that one time, the rest of the time I'll say it the other way. The Notta Clon is a DIY kit that allows you to build your own overdrive pedal in the style of a Clon and an IKEA product, and it requires no soldering. Not only that, but it includes the Shamrock modification and a tube of goop to cover the, you know, the secret circuit, I guess, and it's coming in at $99. Wow. I mean, it would be $99 if it weren't already sold out, but there are more expected to be available in January. So if you fancy a bit of pedal building fun, you can pre-order the next batch now using the link in the video description. Gibson are at number four this week with a whole new bunch of SGs in the Gibson Custom Color Series. Both the standard and the standard 61 models are available in six new exciting colors. Cardinal Red, Classic White, Pelham Blue Burst, Silver Mist, Translucent Teal, and TV Yellow. Aside from the new paint jobs, the guitars are the same as usual. Both models have mahogany bodies and necks with rosewood fingerboards. The standard, of course, has a bigger rounded neck and a batwing pickguard and 490R and 490T humbuckers, while the standard 61 has a small slim taper thin neck, small pickguard, and burstbucker humbuckers. Do they come with cases? Gibson.com. Oh, and they also come with a soft shell case and a Gibson accessory kit. Now, interestingly, on the Gibson website, at least, there's no price increase for the custom color series, as they're priced the same as the regular Cherry and Ebony models. And as far as I know, the series is not limited edition. So you're looking at around $1,800 for the standard and around $2,000 for the standard 61. Now, it feels like Gibson are trying to appeal to a new, fresher, younger generation with these colors because, you know, young people like bright colors, apparently. In fact, on the website, it says, the classic SG for every generation, now in custom colors. But those prices are just not accessible to most beginner and younger players, I would hazard to guess. So without a serious income, I don't think that younger, fresher players are going to be playing these SGs. I think these are going to end up in the hands of people with jobs. That being said, I like the colors. They appeal to me. So maybe I'm that new generation of young people. The thing is, Gibson can't position themselves as an elite guitar maker for the super rich, whilst simultaneously trying to appeal to younger players. Those two things just don't seem to go well together. Before we get to number three on the list, it's time to talk about this week's sponsor, Guitar Auctions at Gardner Holgate. Guitarauctions.co.uk from Gardner Holgate have literally hundreds of guitars, amps, pedals, and other musical stuff in their four-day guitar auction starting on the 5th of December. And I have picked some of my favorite lots to share with you. If you're looking for something special, there is this limited edition Gibson Custom Shop Johnny Winter 1963 Firebird 5, which is estimated to sell at between 4,000 and 6,000 pounds. If you are a player looking for a deal, what about this refinished 1979 Fender Custom Tele, estimated to sell between 800 and 1,200 pounds. And if you're looking for an amplifier, here's a 1974 Marshall JMP with bids currently 
at £1,000. Guitarauctions.co.uk from Gardner Holgate are based in Bath in the UK, but all those auctions are also streamed live on the internet, so you can join in and bid from anywhere in the world, and they'll even assist you with the shipping. I highly recommend you take a look at their online catalogue, which is available here. If you scan this QR code, there's also a link in the video description. So go and find yourself something to bid on at guitar-auctions.co.uk. Okay, back to the list. And for number three this week, we go all the way from Gibson to Epiphone as Epiphone partner with the monster blues player Jared James Nichols for a third time for the Epiphone Jared James Nichols Blues Power. Now this is a stripped back Les Paul custom but in a rather eye-pleasing aged Pelham blue finish and a single Seymour Duncan silencer JJN P90B in the bridge position. Regarding woods, it's an all mahogany body, no maple cap, there's a mahogany neck with an ebony fretboard, and that 22 fret neck is a slim taper C with standard 24 and 3 quarter inch scale and a 12 inch radius. So pretty much standard Gibson there. I mean, Epiphone. There's a volume and tone control, and it comes with an EpiLite case, which is kind of more the, a sturdy padded bag than a case. But I would prefer that over one of those hard cases with the wobbly handle. Now, I love me some Jared James Nichols, and he is the perfect artist to be working with Epiphone. This is a gorgeous yet simple looking guitar, and the single pickup configuration is a lovely recipe, but it's coming in at around 1,099 euros, which is quite surprising as the last model Jared did with Epiphone in 2021 came in at around 700 euros, which is a price hike of around 40% in two years. Again, I know things are getting more expensive, but I think this price is rather optimistic, not exploitative. However, I would love to know what you think. Am I overreacting there? Possibly, but I don't think so. Number two, along with a bunch of other blacked out pedals released this week, some might say leaked by Reverb, Walrus Audio bring us the Meraki Stereo Analog Delay, and I have one here. There it is, what a beautiful looking pedal. It's got an onboard tap tempo and oscillation foot switch just there, and it's got stereo in and out and a socket for an optional expression pedal or dedicated tap tempo and MIDI capability just up there. The Meraki has three selectable delay modes, parallel, ping pong, and serial delay. It's also got three selectable modulation wave shapes, sine, square, and random. The Meraki has eight MN3005 Bucket Brigade chips, which are capable of 1200 milliseconds of delay time and independent controls for left and right signal paths, making this a true stereo delay. And that's like having two analog delay pedals in one that can communicate with each other. The cost of this wondrous functionality? 699 euros is the price I was told, which yes, is a lot of money, but this is no normal delay pedal. If you want like just a few repeats or some ping ponging maybe, then there are some very cheap options available. But I actually looked into how many true stereo analog delay pedals there are out there, and there aren't many and none of them are cheap. The Meraki is definitely aimed at the Strymon sort of crowd rather than the average player. And I played this through my Roland JC40 last night and uh, whew, I could have lost the whole night on the jangly stereo echo. In fact, this Meraki should come with a you might get shouted at for zoning out and playing all night warning sticker on it right there. Honorable mentions. Again, this week was very tough to get down to just the five most exciting things. So here are some things that didn't quite make the list. Line 6 have released yet another free firmware update for the Helix family, firmware 3.70. And what a fine free update it is. Eight new guitar amps, two new bass amps, seven new guitar cabs, two new bass cabs, and five new effects. It is great to see the value of the Helix not only staying, but increasing. Well done, Line 6. 
PRS have released a limited run of 1,000 dead spec Silver Sky models based on Jerry Garcia's Alligator guitar. I talked about the prototype that John Mayer played a few months ago, and even though this guitar is priced at around four grand, they've sold out most places. Well done, Paul. Finally, Boss have celebrated their 50th anniversary by releasing metallic editions of their classic pedals. The DS1, the SD1, and the BD2. The bad news? They are limited to only 7,000 models. The good news? I have three to give away, and you can win them by clicking the link in the video description. Aren't you glad you watched this bit? Go on, go click it, enter the competition. I'll be here waiting. Go on. Andy's Pick of the Week. My Pick of the Week is the Taylor Beacon, which is a clip-on tuner. Yeah, I understand that with all these exciting pedals and guitars, my pick this week might seem a little bit weird, but let me tell you about it and see if I can convince you. Firstly, it's not just a clip-on tuner. It's also a metronome, a timer, a countdown timer, and a torch or flashlight for my American friends. See, it is more exciting than you thought. The tuner has modes for guitar, bass, violin, ukulele, and chromatic tuning. It can do strobe tuning as well as dot tuning between 430 and 450 hertz. The metronome has 12 time signature presets and it goes from 30 to 208 beats per minute. The timer runs up to 100 minutes and the countdown can count down from up to 100 minutes. And the flashlight, well, the flashlight makes dark things brighter. One thing I have tried to do of late is take less and less gear to gigs so I don't forget it at the end. And this multi-purpose tuner could replace several items in my gig bag. Also, I've often had to check my phone to see how long is left in the set because the one man and his dog in the audience don't wear watches. So having this countdown timer on the headstock of the guitar or maybe clipped to the mic stand just seems like a more professional way of checking how many times I can play Wonderwall. But the best thing about the Taylor Beacon is that it's the cheapest item on the list this week, coming in at just under $50, which I know is still a lot of money for a clip-on tuner, but with all those functions and the display looks bright and being Taylor, it has to be good, right? Well, I expect to see it in lots of your Christmas stockings this year, and it has motivated me to be an extra good boy until the end of December in the hope that someone out there tips off that bearded fat man in red. Okay, thank you to the supporters of the show who now have their names on screen. And if you want your name up in lights, then click the join button right here on YouTube or visit my Patreon. A special thanks to the top tier members, Buddha Blue, Michael Lerner. Buzzle. This prank is officially sponsored by Jason Welch. Boom shakalaka. Alinta Boston. Doug Paget. Sarang Narayan. Josh Tanberg. Gary O'Neill. Stephen S. And Dustin Bonnet. Thank you all for your support. It is much appreciated. Now, there's a link in the video description to all the gear I've mentioned should you want more information, or you can scan this QR code that's on screen, and that will take you to a secret page with secret information, as well as the gear info. Finally, go ahead and click there to subscribe to the channel and be kept up to date with all new guitar gear. And uh, don't forget to comment your pick of the week. I will see you in the next one.